What up, dudes? It's Gaz, and welcome back to the Warframe video. So, I thought we'd have another free form kind of discussion video today. I was going to be giving some tips on who I think that Archon shards are very valuable on. People are starting to actually get some Archon shards now that the system's been out for like a month and a half, almost two months. And, you know, maybe you'd like some suggestions on who to put it on. Maybe you can see who I've been putting Archon shards on and so on and so forth. So that'll be the purpose of today's video, just discussion, uh, and also a little bit of gameplay in there as well. But if you've been enjoying these videos, please make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Uh, we do daily Warframe video uploads, and we also do uh, live streams as well uh, on a live stream channel for Warframe as well. So go check that out if you want to. All right, so Archon shards. Uh, what have I been using my Archon shards on? What can I suggest to you as far as Archon shards? Well, the, the big thing here is gonna be, and this should be quite obvious to you, it's a video game. Make sure you're having fun. Don't, just because I'm saying, oh, Archon Shard is good on Korra, Archon Shard is good on blah, blah, blah. If you don't like to play those meta frames, then just whatever. Go put it on your rally. Go do whatever you want. Uh, but I think some big things here are going to be trying to get the most bang for your buck out of your build. And one of the main things you should be trying to solve when you're using Archon Shards uh, on your build is to replace a mod on the entire setup. So, for example, I made a... Ivara build yesterday, or I made an Ivara build like a month ago. I put an Ivara build video out yesterday, and somebody pointed out, hey, Gaz, uh, I think you got the math wrong on the Ivara uh, Terrify number, and that guy was right. So I was about 3% off the power strength because I had originally had Corrosive Projection on there in the past. But here's the thing. If I want to still do, if I want to keep Holster Amp on here, but I still want full armor strip with Molt Augmented on Terrify, what I can do is I can put on one power strength shard on Ivara for this build. We would be past our strength threshold for full armor strip, and I wouldn't need to run corrosive production. I could run holster amp. That's what you should be looking at here, guys. If there's a specific build you're trying to do, you're trying to eke out every little point of power here. So if I, if I was to run corrosive projection, yeah, I wouldn't need to run any Archon shards for full armor strip. But I'd be losing out holster amp, which, you know, that might be valuable to you. Of course, we already have vigorous swaps, so it probably wouldn't be that great. Uh, but that's the kind of thing you should be looking at. Okay, this build is, is technically possible without Archon shards, but I could push it a little bit further with just like you know 10% more power strength because the Archon shards don't give you too much uh, too much power unless you have like a Tau shard. It's like 15% at that point. But that's the main thing you should be looking at, guys. What shards you have, what you can actually sec what you can change in your build or actually potentially like replace on your build with these types of things. So the big things you can replace on your build are gonna mostly or usually be power strength because duration doesn't really have any like break points. Uh, where it's like, oh man, I have I have 200% duration. Now I can actually do the exact thing I wanted. No, it's usually like, okay, now I have 200% strength. I can do exactly what I wanted. For frames like Zaku and I think, is it Cyanax also needs to get? Cyanax needs 200% strength as well. So for frames like that, where there's specific breakpoints on your build. So exactly, like the Ivara situation I just gave you. So that's one for, for power strength shards. And of course, just getting more strength in general can be fun and good on certain frames. So for example, like let's say like on a really niche one, let's say you want to do uh, volt, volt speed. You know, Volt is probably already moving really fast and like, you know, you already got a lot of power strength on Volt. But hey, you know what, 10% more power strength? I got five slots. If you have five red shards, that's like 50% more power strength on Volt. And you'll be moving a lot faster. So that's gonna be the second thing. Number one is try to replace a mod on your build with something stronger. Number two is just go faster and have fun. Um, so another 50% strength in there would be hilarious. Our Eclipse buff would be nuts, and our Shock Trooper buff would be nuts, too. Um, that's number two, is make sure that, you know, you're having fun with, when, when doing this. Or just overkill is also pretty funny. So number three is going to be overkill. Um, so let's go and look at a frame like Nidus. Nidus is a frame that benefits from a lot of the stuff that these shards provide, and not even just the red shards. Like, yeah, some more power strength on Nidus would be nasty. Uh, but how about, you know, some more armor on Nidus? He has all health and, sh and uh, armor, so a nice little jump up in armor there could make him even more tanky. Now, of course, you got to remember that armor has some diminishing returns in this game, and also Nidus' third ability, Parasitic Link, does give him damage redirection as well, which is different. Um, so, I don't know. It's going to really be up to you, like, what you think is more valuable on Nidus. I would say, for me personally on Nidus, um, it's going to be hard to choose because, at least on this build right here, which is missing a mod slot... Um, yeah, this is usually a teaming virulence build, actually. Um, you know, some power strength would be better for some more red crits and some more eclipse buff. But what else is he getting out of those those uh, the power strength? Really, not much. I mean, if you were like linking to an ally, I guess they'll give you more of a power strength increase. So that could be good for like a buffer Nidus. But a lot of things that Nidus is going to be really caring about 
you know, you're already modding for it. You don't need more duration on Nidus. You don't need... I mean, I'll take more power strength on Nidus. You don't need more power strength on Nidus. So, that's when you start looking at some of the other things. It's like, okay, well, he already does so much damage. He already does so much buffing. What else can I get here? And a lot, unfortunately for the yellow shards, I, I personally view these top three ones as just not worth it at all. Effectiveness of energy orbs does not work on equilibrium. Effectiveness of health orbs does not work on equilibrium. And energy filled at spawn, just use an energy pizza. I don't see... Like, like you could just use prep if, if you really care that much about having full energy at spawn, just put on preparation. Now you could say, okay, well I'm trying to like like you just I'm trying to replace a mod of my builds. I don't want to run preparation. Technically, yeah, you could use like two or three Archon shards for that, but at the same time, you could be going for parkour velocity or casting speed. Uh, I'm thinking of casting speed maybe, but yeah, remember that casting speed does not affect every little thing in the game. So yeah, I don't even think a, a yellow shard on, on Nidus would be good at all. That's when you start looking at blue shards. So on Nidus, we could go for either more health, more armor, more energy max, or health regen per second. Nidus does have health regen built in per second, um, so I'm probably going to go with armor on him. Uh, so as far as armor and health EHP calculations, you do want to make sure that your armor is... You don't want to have like basically zero armor. If you are not 10,000 health in Aros with 200 armor... And you're going for more health charge. You're just you're not doing it. <laughs> That's you're you're having fun, but you're not doing you're not technically doing the best EHP calculations. So for example, I have so I have eighteen hundred armor and I have like about eleven hundred health, or I have eleven hundred uh, armor and I have eighteen hundred health on this Nidus build. I would probably need to go for a little bit of armor here for the best EHP calculation. Keeping in mind that Nidus does have built-in health rege health regeneration, and I sometimes do run Arcane Grace on him. Um, so yeah, for EHP, it, it, you want to have a, you want to have a good amount of both. Um, but I'd say that you probably want to have more health than armor because the diminishing returns on armor gets pretty nasty when you're like at like 2,000-ish armor. Also, do keep mind with Arcane Grace. So that's going to be uh, the, the red shards and the, the blue shards. Let's quickly talk about yellow shards and frames I think that I would recommend to you for yellow shards. And it's going to really come down to personal preference. There are people that think that the casting speed of Garuda is okay with no, with no natural talent, no uh, yellow shards at all. And I cannot disagree with that more. You'll see that my Garuda shard laid out, loadout is changing a little bit right now. I'm, uh, I've gotten more red shards, so I've gone for more crit damage here. But I consider these two yellow shards on Garuda a must. And that's because you cast, abil you cast her third ability so often. And if you, as someone that's played Garuda for years, I cannot play her without casting speed reduction. And like I said earlier in the video, we, re we have replaced... If you watched my video from like a month ago, I was saying, hey, what, what, build you, uh, what mod should I take off, guys? I took off Natural Talent, I put on Vigorous Swap. The amount of damage increase we get here when I'm using things like the Glaive Prime are nuts. So, since we've got three crit damage shards, we can go with things like the Tenant Strofa for big, big damage. 7.5 multiplier. Uh, the video that I had on the Void Angels, we used the Glaive Prime. 7.7 .7 multiplier on the Glaive Prime with three, uh, amb or three Crimson Shards. So, big, disgusting damage. And of course... If you're running a frame that does have a uh, you know, different source of melee damage, those Archon Shards are going to give me more crit damage on my Garuda Claws. And, for example, if I was playing someone like Korra, Archon Shards for the red crit damage are going to apply to her Whip Claw, which might make you change your mind on what stat stick you're running in the, in the future. Not as far as which weapon you're running. You're still going to want to run uh, weapons with high Ribbon Disposition, but I'm actually going to be experimenting with this Ribbon right here. Since I've got so much crit damage coming from the Archon Shards, when I eventually get, like, a bunch of them for her, uh, we can go for more crit chance, because, you know... I I'm just going to test it out. I'm not sure if this will actually be better damage than something like the, the Amphis with a crit damage, uh, an overall damage ribbon, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to eventually try it out. It, the, the problem with these, these Archon Shards is it takes so long to get them all. Here's the, the ribbon I'm comparing it to. It takes so long to get them all that I'm... You know, it, it's a hard thing to test, which is why we're having a... You know, what are some good ideas for Archon Shards? Uh, now, as far as, you know, we're talking about yellow ones, it's going to really come up to your personal preference on if this frame's abilities take too long to cast, in your opinion. Some of the best frames for natural talent and just casting abilities faster in general are going to be Revenant Prime, Parodia, uh, Garuda, and let me try to think of some other ones while I'm in here. Um, maybe Harrow, because Harrow's third ability, Thurible, the, long, the faster you can spin the little Thurible thing around, the more energy you can dump into it quickly. So Harrow's a good one. Um, Necros is a good one. Necros Shadow, the dead ability, takes so long to cast uh, that you might want to run Natural Talent. Actually, you're going you're, you're to want to eventually take off Natural Talent. The thing is, it's going to be 50% casting speed from two Amber Shards, and that's going to be equating two Natural Talent. So two, Amber, uh, two Archon Shards for one 
uh, for one mod slot is like what you're kind of like paying off here. So, um, you know, there's a lot of them. So it's going to be whatever you play a lot. I'd say Revenant's good because recasting Mesmer skin really fast is, is nice. Um, and as far as frames for like uh, Crimson Shards, like we said earlier, frames that you want to overkill the power strength on, sure. Like Wisp, for example. Do you really need more power strength on Wisp? No, you don't. But I'm going to probably put an Archon Shard on Wisp once I get enough of them. Um, and then, you know, other other ones too. Like, basically everyone can, can benefit from power strength besides like maybe Nova for a Speed Nova build. Uh, which is why you might want to be a little bit careful what shards you use on Nova. Because you don't want to mess with any Speed Nova situations. So... Just a uh, video to get the juices th flowing. Guys, if you have any suggestions on uh, frames that can use Archon Shards very well, let me know in the description. I've actually got a, a full Archon Shard Anaros video on the horizon. Um, and that one's going to be trying to go for the best EHP possible. Um, seeing how it holds up on the steel path. I'm not really having high hopes for that build, uh, but it's actually doing pretty, it's, it's pretty strong. I'm just, I'm wondering how the survivability is going to be at like level like 1000 steel path. So once I get some footage for that, that video will come out and I will have daily videos on the channel. I really appreciate all the support guys. Um, just kind of a discussion video here, uh, waiting for the information on Echoes of Veilbreaker and the dev stream. So I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy and peace.